Hey everybody, just wanted to make this late evening video. So I get a lot of questions, people saying, well, Mike, I get it about the government being a net payer of interest. But when interest rates go up, then that hurts home buyers because it makes the, the uh, cost of buying a home more expensive. Okay, so you have to, and which is correct, okay, but you have to understand something that you have in any economy there are going to be the debtors and there are going to be the creditors when interest rates move around it's not like money flows out into outer space it's that it's taken away and it's a net negative it just gets reshuffled around when interest rates go down that's good for debtors but it is bad for creditors they earn less money their income either stays flat or goes down and for debtors in a sense their income goes up because their debt service goes down okay when interest rates go up it just reverses that equation that is bad for debtors they have to pay more so their net income goes down all else being equal of course and the income of creditors goes up the amount of income in the economy either stays the same or goes up if in the case where the fed raises interest rates and the government is a net payer when the interest rates go up that net is an, is a net increase of income to the economy now remember this is very important the non-government the private sector okay both domestically and rest of the world that we are a net creditor okay how do I know that? Because we hear this every day that the government has 19 trillion in debt. Who holds the debt? The whole rest of the world, the, uh, the non-government. So we are a net creditor. So that means while, yes, there is a negative effect to home buyers, the overall effect is to add to incomes. Look, I bought a house, my first house that I bought, it came with an, a mortgage interest rate of 11 and three quarter percent. Now that, that that would make people gag just hearing that. Now I think a, what's a 30 year is down to like 3.4 percent. Um, and I paid 11 and uh, three quarters percent. This was like in what 1985 or 1986. It didn't stop me from buying a home. You know um, the thing is, uh, you have to have enough income. To be able to make the debt service payments right so when the rates go up one uh, sector of the economy or one group in the economy will see their in, uh, income rise those are the creditors so the economy I mean the income stays in the economy but it goes up in the case when the government adds to it the government's debt increases but the private sectors wealth increases right they're they're equal but opposite the government runs a deficit the private sector has a surplus equal but opposite to the government's deficit it has to be that way just by by pure accounting the government spends a billion the billion gets paid out to individuals to firms to social security recipients to you know so their net income goes up if the government spends 235 billion on interest those are payments made to people, and they're payments that don't come with a corresponding liability, right? That's vertical money. Horizontal money, bank money, is like, yeah, you get a deposit in your bank account, but at the same time, you get a liability. you got to pay the loan back, and you got to pay the loan back with interest. So it's a way for banks to profit, uh, and it doesn't add anything uh, to the non-bank sector it's actually like a, almost like a tax on the non-bank sector see how loans are that's why we want the government to spend because those are dollars that we get that don't come with a corresponding liability we get to keep them and spend them any way we want all right so I hope that clears it up you got to think all the time this is double entry accounting we got debtors we got creditors for every debt there is a credit for every uh, debt, you know, for every liability, there is an asset, 
All right? It balances out. You got to remember that. It's very important. Bye.